So welcome back to another week in AI content. And this week was actually quite interesting because a lot of unsurprised tools managed to come out. So let's take a look. So starting with Audio LDM2, it's learning holistic audio generation with self-supervised pre-training or for the people who can't be bothered with technical jargon, it's basically text to audio, text to other stuff as well. So in this video that they talk about, they essentially put a text input in, but you're able to get an entire output of different kind of outputs. And if that doesn't make sense to you, I'm going to play part of the video, but essentially what it is, is that you're getting an output that is not just text to audio. So on the page, you can see it's a section one text prompted audio generation. So you can see that this is essentially sound effects. So what you can get is you can get sound effects. You can also get music generation and you can also get speech generation. That means this entire model, it essentially gives you three different entire outputs, which is really, really useful because a lot of the reasons why people use different models is because they need Need to fine tune these models and specify them for certain purposes. But with this model, it seems that they've managed to combine state of the art text performance in text to audio, text to music, and text to speak generation, which is pretty insane. So I think this is going to be one of the models that is largely used because, as you know, people who are working with text to audio, text to music, and text to speech, usually what does happen is you might be working on a project in which you might need text to music and which you might need text to speech, and of course, you might need text to sound effects. So I could presume a tool like this, the reason I think this is so game changing is because something like this where you have the sound effects and in a moment I will play some of them so you can see that this isn't actually awful or just something where it's just a demo. This is something that is really, really good and I did use this tool live and it did show me something that was really cool as well. So, so right here, essentially what we do have is text sound effects. I'm going to play some of these text sound effects now so you can hear them and you can see just how good this is. <laughs> So now that you've seen all of the examples, the reason I think Audio LM2 is game changing is because something like the Adobe Suite, imagine I'm editing a video and I want them to be able to add, you know, a background track, I can add a background track, then I want to be able to add the speaker, I can add the speaker, then I want to add some sound effects, I can simply add that all in one simple tool. There is a video that they did release, um, but it is actually really really cool so um leave a comment down below let me know if you do try it out and if you do like the results because my personal results were actually pretty good then we had something game changing where we had google's deepmind ceo said this next algorithm will eclipse chat gpt so essentially the company that built AlphaGo, the company that built many different game changing breakthroughs in artificial intelligence is working on a new system called gemini that stated that it will tap into techniques that helped AlphaGo to be a go champion in 2016 and it's going to eclipse ChatGPT. Now, essentially what this means is that they're probably going to release a tool that's somehow more advanced than ChatGPT or GPT-4. And by them stating that it's going to eclipse ChatGPT, I don't doubt it because if you've ever seen AlphaGo and you've ever watched our video in which we talked about it, you'll understand just how crazy it was. So essentially the reason this is so crazy is because number one, it's from Google and Google's DeepMind have done insane things with AI before if you've ever been around the AI space. And number two is the fact that they're pumping billions of dollars into this and they're using a new method um, of you know training and making this AI think. So I think this is where we're going to get some real innovation that's going to lead to that next step. And this article is really good and I would recommend you all read this because it is very, very interesting. But of course, as you know, the article does dive into the grave risk because when you're leveling up an AI and you're making that AI essentially into something that we've never seen before, it definitely could have some risks because I, th I think they didn't really understand what they were saying when they said that they're going to make sure that this large language model can plan and think long term. I mean, if someone said that to me a year ago, I would have said, well, that not that super dangerous? Isn't that what we're trying to avoid? But now I guess they're running forward with it. So we will see. Um, and they did say that it might be released sometime in 2024 or 2025. So that will be interesting to see how the developments do come into play and how they're going to be working on this system. Then we had Luma Labs talk about how they're essentially trying to accelerate the rate of advancement and grow their community with their sponsor, Nerf Studio and the Berkeley AI Research Lab. So essentially what they're doing is I think they're open sourcing this tool and they're essentially trying to get a lot more people invested in this tool in order to make this kind of... So yeah, essentially what they're trying to do is make more people invest into this kind of software and essentially make this kind Kinds of content with this tool because I do believe that this kind of content and these kinds of tools are really, really underrated. Um, and what they're about to do for technology is really, really impressive. What they also did announce around two to three days ago was 
they essentially released this app called fly throughs an app that shows off your space with ai generated cinematic videos that look like professional drone captures so essentially all you have to do is do your um you know your lidar capture whichever whichever however you do it and then um essentially what it does is it does the fly through itself so it's actually really really cool i think you, you can also do some of the fly throughs yourself and then it kind of makes it into a really cool montage now one thing that I haven't seen anyone talk about when we look at Luma Labs AI is going to be the application in terms of crime scenes. Because one thing that I was looking at is the other day, you know, tons of crime channels are popping up on YouTube where you can watch various documentaries or crime scenes and stuff and how detectives are analyzing this. But do you not think it would be interesting if maybe someone, for example, uses Luma Labs, you know, takes a snapshot of the crime scene at that specific time. And then, um, you know, people around the world, detectives can analyze the crime scene. And maybe you can, you know, have that snapshot where you can look at that and then think, okay, maybe this happened, maybe that happened, because sometimes crime scenes get contaminated, sometimes things can happen, and I think this would be definitely a really good application. I haven't really seen too many other than like real estate, of course, when you're trying to view a house um, or cinematic montages, but of course, this doesn't involve moving objects, which is unfortunate, but um, it's still really, really cool. So um, Luma Labs, you know, you can use it on your phone, you can do it for your house, many different things that you want to do. So um, yeah, really, really cool, and I would definitely check this out. Then of course, we have NVIDIA finally releasing their model Neuralangelo. So um, essentially, if you don't know what Neuralangelo was, it was where you could just take any photo and convert it into a 3D model. So it's really, really accurate, like really, really accurate. Um, so it's just shockingly accurate compared to the previous ones in terms of how accurate these 3D models eventually are. So it's something that will be interesting because if you don't understand the AI cycle, essentially what happens is an AI tool gets released. Um, or announced and then essentially what happens after that is they release a research paper with usually with the tool and then what happens after that is they open source it and when they open source it it allows people to build on top of that ai tool which then means that once someone is able to build on top of that ai tool then would that's where you know you get all of these ai tools all these ai apps um you know for example when llama was open source you know we got tons of these smaller smaller large language models but now that this is open source we're likely to get some kind of 3d recreation you know stuff where people can fine tune it maybe they can make it better maybe they can make user interfaces they can make products so it will be interesting and i do think that's how many businesses are going to be making money by you know just editing open source tools and making them into a full-fledged product so definitely seems like a gold rush opportunity but at the same time i can't wait to use this because there are some pictures that i do want as 3d scenes um and it will be interesting to see how this is used um in many different industries and i think i know this might sound weird but i do think something like this will be used maybe in like planets or something like that like for example let's say the mars rover is trying to analyze another planet and it can't venture to a certain area it could take a snapshot of that terrain because it can't get there and then it could analyze it in 3d and then maybe you could get more data about that specific area so that would be really really cool so um yeah there's many different explanations we did release an entire video on that so you might want to check that out in the description below um but yeah it's really really cool so um I'm excited for this. I'm excited to see what people build on it. Then, of course, we had another AI tool release, one image to high quality 3D object generation using both 2D and 3D diffusion priors. Now, this one is super interesting because I've seen tons and tons and tons of different AI tools come out, even one from OpenAI, like if you if you even believe that. And this 3D tool surpasses even that. And one thing I want people to understand about AI, and I really do want to get a debate going in the comment section about this because it is something that I do think is important. I think that any company that solely focuses on solving one AI problem is going to be vastly better than any AI company that focuses on solving various problems. Because time and time again, what we see is, you know, many of these apps that you're seeing, many of these other examples that you're seeing, you know, Shap E, I think this one from, was from OpenAI, and some of these other ones are from other companies that do other AI stuff as well. But the problem is that these aren't that great. Like in converting this image to a 3D model, it isn't that great. But this company that's focused on doing this but you can see magic one two three they've worked extensively on this you can see just how good this is like, look at that teddy bear look at this statue look at that horse look at this thing like those actually look like game ready i would argue that some of them are game ready maybe not the horse because the horse's face does look a bit weird but I literally you know generated objects just from an image this is some pretty pretty impressive stuff so um they use a different strategy um, i'm not going to get too much into the details but i do think that this kind of stuff is really interesting because it shows us that when companies just simply focus on um, you know whatever it is they want to do and they really just you know decide to make these high quality meshes it shows us that specialization is going to be something that i do think stands out so if there's any air companies watching this you know i highly doubt it but um i would say specialization is is where it's going to set you far apart because if there's a company that can literally do image to 3d with perfection they're going to be worth a lot because image to text to image is huge 
um and this is very very close like this teddy bear this statue this horse this mug right whatever it is right here that's really really close so um i think which whichever company manages to solve it quickly um they're gonna do really really well so um, there's that but then we had something called music to image which was really really interesting because it's not something that you would expect or even has a demand but i do think that some creatives will use it so essentially you can select an audio and then you can generate an image from that music um, and i'm not sure what it's based on too much but it is very very interesting to see the kinds of ai tools that are constantly released because music to image wasn't something that i even thought about but um, I'm guessing just based on what I think they do is maybe they have something that describes the music track, then converts that description into a text prompt that is then led into something like Stable Diffusion, and then you get an image output from that. So um, yeah, I think this is something that could work because I mean, sometimes people make music and they want to transform it into other mediums of art. Um, and I guess sometimes also people, when they do have music, they want to see what it looks like. You know, what does this sound like? What does this feel like? Um, if it's aggressive, if it's, you know, um, having a certain theme, I don't know. It's definitely interesting, although, although it's not crazy, you know, it's not game changing. I still think that something like this is interesting. Um, and it's definitely something you can check out, you can use because there's a hugging face space. So yeah, um, let me know what you think about this as well. Okay, so this is probably the biggest thing that I've ever seen in AI. And I think this is going to transform online content. And I think there's literally going to be a law made about this because what we are looking at is the very next evolution in how um, news presenters, how YouTubers, how you know media companies, including some people like myself, may actually choose to deploy their content. So what you're seeing on screen is not a real person. This isn't a real person at all. This person didn't get up and record this content. They didn't record the voiceover. This is 100% artificial intelligence generated content and it kind of blew my mind because i was like what on earth is going on here but i did mess around with the software a year ago and it was shockingly good but now it's indistinguishable from reality so essentially this is an ai avatar you can clone yourself and and make videos and, and make it say whatever you want so um take a look at this video because i know you've just been looking at some guy and and you haven't even heard anything but um it's pretty insane okay um, and i'm gonna talk about some of the tricks that they did use because i think i did pick up on some of these tricks because it was really cool but take a look at this video because it, it's still 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 till this day ever since i've seen this it's still been playing in my mind every single day because i'm thinking how on earth is this even possible but enough rambling take a look in the early days of computer programming a significant historical anecdote is known as grace hopper and the bug in 1947 at harvard university rear admiral grace hopper was working on the mark ii computer one day the system stopped working and technicians discovered a moth trapped between the contacts of a relay causing the malfunction. Hopper then coined the term defudging to describe the process of fixing computer errors. She even pasted the moth in her logbook, which is now on display at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. Now that you've seen that, understand that this YouTuber, Jesse Wellen, someone that you might know about if you've been on YouTube for maybe about five years, but this guy was like a prankster back in the day. It was really popular. Um, he actually also did this with his own avatar, which he cloned, which just goes to show us um, how good this really is now i think his video is not as good but i do think that um you know the movements some of the you know inflection some of the pauses do make it a lot more realistic and i think when we start to get to that area where these ai companies start to realize that some of the mistakes is actually what makes a lot of the stuff human um that's when i think it's going to be a game over moment because a lot of the times what we have is ai trying to be perfect and usually perfections isn't great because life isn't perfect like for example um if you were to draw like a car there's usually you know rough things on the car that you it's, it's not usually a car that's just fresh out of the showroom there's usually mistakes there's usually marks usually when people speak sometimes they go mm, sometimes i have little off pauses but with speech it's usually all perfect clear and concise which is why i think that this kind of tool um, they're already getting some of that nuance perfect already, which is a little bit scary. So um, it will be interesting to see how far this tool does go, because I think once this gets released worldwide, because currently it's in beta or alpha, um, it's going to be absolutely insane. So take a look out for that one, because that definitely, definitely did scare me. Also, Anthropic did actually improve Claude 2, which isn't really big news, but um, I think it's important to note that Claude 2 is actually coming up on the level of ChatGPT in terms of usability, just because, as you know, currently ChatGPT is facing a crisis where many people are stating that it isn't as good as its counterparts in terms of the fact that the quality has declined. So I think it's a PR problem because ChatGPT is most certainly better than every other AI tool out there, but because it's declined in usability, Many users are feeling frustrated that they initially paid for something, but it's gone down in quality. I mean, imagine buying a phone and it got worse as you used it. I mean, although that does happen, it's not what you'd expect from a software. You wouldn't expect your software 
to get worse okay it's not like a hardware issue um they've just decided to do that i think because of pricing issues so um it will be interesting to see if many people move over to claude 2 because also you have a thousand context window you know a hundred thousand context window which means you can input pdfs large bodies of text um and i know that's something that you can't do with chat gpt and another thing that's annoying with chat gpt as well is that not only do you have to pay for it um it's not currently worldwide a lot of the features they release it's just for us at the moment so um that is you know quite frustrating for many users so it will be interesting to see what happens over the future but i do think that claude 2 is is actually up there now especially with the context window um it definitely self sets itself apart um also nvidia unveils a more powerful ai chip coming next year and honestly guys when it comes to nvidia i just have to say that this company a lot of people are saying they're overvalued you know it's a stock market bubble I, like i think the price is actually justified and i'm not a stock advisor on anything like that but i've looked at nvidia time and time again and they just keep doing everything right like honestly they just do everything right like they are really 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 in the game when it comes to ai like they have the graphics card they have the software they have the robots they have the specialization they have the team they have the no they literally have so much stuff that i wouldn't be betting on any other company when it comes to ai they are really great um they do provide us with a lot of information that we supply you guys with so i would say that when they do release this gh200 super chip it's it's going to be incredible i mean it's it's going to be absolutely incredible so um <clears throat> i didn't think that they were going to be able to continually increase the quality of their chips but somehow they do it and if you're thinking okay it's just a chip like what is that going to change well think about it like this okay i mean earlier this year or later on this year they announced that they could <coughs> train entire models on one chip when previously that wasn't possible so if we get to a stage where you can essentially train entire models on one chip in just a couple of days think about how quick we're going to be getting updates to ai models think about how quick someone's going to be able to train their own model and think about how future models the models like chat gpt6 gpt8 gpt10 google's gemini how much easier it's going to be for them in order to train those models because the compute's time is going to be that much quicker so i think that's something that's really underrated and that is something that um you know people aren't realizing is going to increase so much the speed at which this kind of stuff comes out so um keep an eye for this because these are the announcements that they don't break the headlines but they really do move everything quickly because people are like oh my god all these tools coming out so quickly well thanks to nvidia it's thanks to all these fast chips that are able to get everything processed so quickly so all these cloud companies man they're going to be blowing up but um yeah nvidia once again doing it crazy then of course we had something called suno ai so essentially it's text to music and we have seen loads of different text to music but this is the first tool that is actually out there and released so thank god for that because um you know so many tools out there you know in these videos that we talk about we, we talk about them but the tools don't get released like i might say okay they released this text image for example earlier in the video we talked about you know um text to 3d or whatever but um or images 3d but the problem is is that we can't actually use these tools so what useful is a tool um if we can't use it um and this is something that you can use it is an alpha I and mean, then you can sign up it's like discord it's like mid journey so um for those of you who are creators out there who want uncopyrighted soundtracks definitely going to shake up the music industry the royalty free soundtrack industry um i do want to know what your thoughts on is this because um although it doesn't sound absolutely insane i do think this is going to change a lot because once we get full three minute soundtracks that sound perfect like mid journey sex image um things are about to change so with that being said um let's move on to the next one then we have play ht which is a low-key player in the ai space and they released something called um their conversational model which actually challenges 11 labs everyone knows what 11 labs is it's that privately funded company that you can um use to make generated ai voices and it sounds absolutely indistinguishable from human voices but um play ht they really did just change the absolute game with this conversational stuff i mean on their website you can see ai text speech ai voice cloning voice generation api but what they released with the uh with the conversational stuff it's crazy okay now don't take my word for it okay don't take my word for it look at this video because um i think this is going to be the second company that most people do use um and just take a look because it's crazy all right it, it's just crazy i mean um yeah i'm just gonna play the video um and you let me know if you can tell which one is ai because i can't okay the comments can't on other videos um and i don't know so <laughs> you let me know <laughs> i honestly can't believe what i'm seeing right now i honestly can't believe what i'm seeing right now uh i honestly can't believe what i'm seeing right now i i honestly can't believe what i'm seeing right now hello play support speaking hey guys yeah so i've been on your basic plan for like a few months and um, i think i want to upgrade to the um the professional plan the one that's 99 dollars per month mm, yeah sure glad you're liking it enough to you know consider an upgrade let me just um pull up your details real quick can you shoot me your account email or, or like your phone number? Sure. 
It's uh, 650-451-2218. All right, just give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you are. So what are you actually looking for in the upgrade? Any uh, specific features or stuff that you've got your eye on? Yeah, well, I've been running out of storage a bit. And then we had something that was, uh, once again, shocking as AI is. I mean, every week it seems like there's something that just, you know, just blows my mind. Um, and I did think that these people were going to be safe, but I, I, I really don't know which job is going to be safe other than, you know, entertainers, because um, this, what you're seeing on screen now, is an AI robot that cleans toilets. And it isn't just like a basic like button you press and then, you know, it essentially just, you know, like wipes the toilet. But this is something that literally goes inside a toilet, opens the door, shuts the door, hoovers, cleans it. Um, and I think this is crazy because everybody knows that nobody really wants to clean toilets. I mean, especially in some scenarios, you know, like for example, a bathroom in a bar, you know, those ones are particularly not nice or, you know, like public bathrooms. Um, and I think you have to understand how capitalism works, where if a company can get, you know, robots made cheaply enough to where they don't have to pay people to clean bathrooms, I think it's going to be a job that's just completely done by a robot. I mean, this robot literally is opening the door, um, you know, cleaning it and, and just moving on to the next. It, it's just crazy. Like, I didn't think we'd see that this year. I didn't think we would. Um, and maybe it's been something that has been going on. But I mean, it even grabs like some tissue and just like, it's crazy. I'm not going to lie, guys. Um, this was something that I really didn't see coming just yet. Um, but let me know what you think about this because it was it was just, I mean, crazy to see how good it was. You know, it wasn't tripping over. Um, it's got like a hole, you know, based on it. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you're watching the video. You're seeing what I'm seeing, okay? Um, and maybe I'm overreacting like, dude, it's just a robot, you know, trying to clean the toilet. Like, it's not revolutionary by any means. But... I think the accuracy in which it does it, the fact that it can open doors, um, I think that part is interesting. Um, so I think this shows us um, once robots get really good at something, they're really going to be um, a part of the workforce. But I think what's going to be crazy about this, because I did do some research and they have been working on these robots for a long time, is when these robots become super cheap. So when economies of scale start to the point where these robots become super cheap, I think that's where in your everyday life, you're going to we'll just be walking on the street and then you're going to interact with the robot. So that's what will be interesting um, for the most part. But let me know what you think about this because I do think that this is quite interesting. And, and, and I want to say one more thing before we move on from this. Um, most people are going to say, dude, it's just a robot that can you know clean toilets. Just remember that these things get better every year. So now they can just clean robots perfectly what are they going to be able to do next? Just remember that it's continual progression and evolution. Then we have this one where AI just reconstructed a Pink Floyd song from Brain Activity. Um, and I, I, I don't know, guys. I don't even think we're living in reality anymore because I feel like this stuff is happening. And these videos might get 10 to 15K views or whatever. But a large majority of people don't realize how advanced this technology is increasing and just how much money is going into this software. So I really do think it's going to be interesting to see how much the world is going to change in the next, you know, 10 to 20 years just based on AI alone. So um, something like this, um, you know, is really crazy. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know what to say other than that. Like this is something that is basically science fiction if you told it to someone 10 years ago. So yeah, crazy.